Hey guys, I'm coming to you from my real remodel project where I've got a mock-up over here of the windows I'm gonna be using on this house. That's the Geldwin Aura line, brand new, coming out in 2020. And we're gonna be installing that on the Huber Zip system. So I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to get together with my frame carpenter, Bill Wood, and show you the best practice method for installing a window into the Huber Zip system. Today's video is sponsored by Huber and Geldwin. Let's get going. Hey guys, y'all met Bill Wood before. Bill and I have built houses for a dozen or so years now. That's right. It's yeah. crazy, Bill. All right, so we're gonna show you the best practice method for installing this brand new Geldwin Aura Line window into a Huber Zip system. Now remember, it's all about shingling. And no matter the window manufacturer, we wanna install our windows so that the rough opening is totally waterproof. So if anything happens in the future, we're gonna shed that water to the outside. So first off, we've used a lot of different sill pans over the years on our jobs, Bill and I, but Huber came out with this a couple years ago. If you've not seen it, it's called Stretch Tape. And this is a crazy impressive sill pan material because it's gonna stretch really nicely and conform into all those random corners on just about any kind of project, whether it's a pipe flashing that's coming out of the house or a window. So Bill, will you show us how we actually pan flash this window to start with? Sure. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our roll and remember we wanna bring this up six or eight inches and rather than measuring it out, what we'll do just to kind of save some time is roll this out, make a form and then mark it with your finger and then go ahead and make a cut. So we'll just set it in our hole and depending on the the depth of your sill, this is a two by four installation. So we're using the six inch stretch tape here. If you were using a two by six, you'd use the wider version probably. That's right. And what we wanna do is make sure that it, it protects our sill if any water does get behind our window and then shingles over the top, over the face of the uh, zip wall. Yep, now we so. have a split release liner and while Bill's doing that, I do wanna make mention that you want your sill to be sloped. And I've seen a lot of guys, including my buddy Jake Bruton, who, by the way, did a great video series on a similar install on fine home building. Uh, and Jake's a big fan of using a cedar um, beveled siding as a sill. Bill and I like to actually cut our sills uh, on an angle, or pardon me, cut our cripples on an angle underneath that sill so that all our sills have about a five degree bevel on them. It's really easy to do. Bill and I have worked together a long time. I don't even have to mention it. His guys automatically know whenever they're cutting the cripples for a sill, cut them on a five degree angle, and then all those sills have just a little bit of positive slope to the outside. So that's what's going on here. Now he's doing the inside uh, release liner first, and, it, and then he's gonna stick that down, and then he's gonna go ahead and do the outside one next. But you can see he's bringing that stretch tape basically right inside on the sill, just a somewhere around a half inch or so in. And then he's coming up the sides about six inches. And what I like to do is uh, on the corners, I actually learned this from Jake, I like to use a bit of a, uh, a tool to help me kind of get into the corners. And the uh, speed square is a great tool for that. Just kind of pushes into the corner, make sh making sure there's no bulk. Remember, you want to generally frame your rough openings about a, a quarter inch on all sides or a half inch top and bottom bigger than the window. So you've got some room to shim and you've got a little bit of room for that flashing in there as well. And remember, all the zip tapes are pressure sensitive adhesives. They're all acrylic adhesives, which is really the newest and best technology when it comes to flashing tapes. But it's really important to pressurize that tape. It needs to wet onto the surface and it needs that pressure. You can't just hand pressure it. Um, you can do that hand pressure to start, but you always wanna finish off with a roller. That's gonna make sure it's gonna really be tenacious and never come off. And you'll see, I've done lots of this stuff, and you'll see that it can be a bit of a bear, especially if you stick it to itself. Yeah, we wanna try and not stick it to itself if we can. <laughs> so you can start to Pull it. You don't want to pull it too much if you don't have to, because a lot of times this really has to endure some time. But here in the corner, once I get my 
middle kind of anchored, then I can bring my thumbs and stretch it. You can see that S stretching out. And then just kind of get this adhered. Oh man, that's cool. It does, it's nice stuff. I really like how it, how it sticks and doesn't move too. Some of them have a tendency to, some of the other flexible flashings tend to curl back. They do, and that's why you only want to stretch it as much as you need to. Yep. And we don't want to thin it out too much. And that adhesive is going to build in time. It actually gets stronger with time. You know, if you absolutely have to, sometimes you can throw a little staple in that. Just a little T50 staple. Sometimes these projects stay open for quite a long time before they get siding or stucco or stone. And so we're really asking these products to do a lot for us. Okay. Especially here in Texas. That's looking good. Looks great. Nice job, Bill. Thank you. Okay, now in the past, I would tell you that if you look up Bill and I's videos from you know five years ago, I actually have a gel one video from five, six years ago. Um, we basically stopped at this method, or we stopped here. We did not cover the jam, but today we feel like it's best practice to actually cover your jam with your waterproofing and your air tightness all the way to the back of the jam. So the next step on this is we're gonna take uh, on both the jams, the right and the left hand jam, a piece of flashing tape. They're straight flashing tape and we're gonna run it just below the, uh, the window sill here and run it all the way up to the head. So let's get started on that. And we need a little bit of a ladder probably to reach that too, Bill. I've got one right here. You might consider running a line on the left hand side to make sure that you're you're getting these numbers correct. Now this flashing tape, if I remember correctly, Bill, is just below four inches. It's like three and three quarters, something like that. I think that's oh, right. You want to come in a little further. Yeah. And so, you know, I've always felt funny about applying anything to bare wood. And now, zip system sheathing is not bare wood, but we feel like it's best practice to kind of give this a layer of protection prior to trapping it behind the flange of the window. Yeah, and the other thing we're doing here is we're connecting, this face of the zip is our air tightness layer, and so we're connecting that and making sure everything's tight, airtight, through the window install. Yeah, it looks great, Bill. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right, let me roll that out. Okay, so now he's gonna cut it. And you can see he's running that back into the jam now. And then ultimately what we're gonna do is when we, when we cock the window to the jam on the inside, that's gonna connect our air tightness from the window to the zip tape. There you go. We try to be as neat as possible because by the time we get all these layers on the face of the sheathing, it tends to build up a bit and then we have to compensate for that when we do our window trim. One of the cool Huber's done over the years is they've, I don't know, three, four, three years ago maybe they started selling all their products on Amazon. Uh, not the, uh, the sheathing, but all the tapes and flashings. So if you need just a small amount of something, you can get it. Now you notice when he's putting that tape on, he's not going as high this time. He's only going on the top, just you know, an inch or so over the top because we want to layer other tapes that are going on the window on top of that. And we want to shingle those as much as we can. Now you notice he's going about an inch or so above the uh, rough opening. And again, onto this face, he's going maybe an inch and a half, two inches. And we're gonna go below and make a straight cut here. There you go. Okay, roll that thing out. We always like to roll the tape right after we've done it. That way you don't forget especially in a window install when things are about to get covered. You don't want to forget to roll it. Okay, last we're going to do the head. Can you get up to that head, Bill? You notice we've shingled that, right? So he started, it, always want to start low and work your way high. While Bill's making those final cuts, a couple things I want to mention on this uh, window. This is a brand new window from Gelwin, the Oraline. 
It's being released early 2020, but they're going to unveil it at the IBS show in Vegas. So if you're coming to the Builder Show in January, that's the International Builder Show in Las Vegas, stop by the Gelderman booth and learn some more about this brand new product being unveiled early 2020. It's the Oraline Composite, and I'm going to be using that here on my uh, Real Remodel Series house. Interesting product. It's a composite frame, meaning it's a wood and PVC composite, similar to a composite deck. Uh, where you've got much more strength than a standard um, vinyl window, but much less cost than a standard wood window. So it's, it kind of fills in a nice category, a little bit more expensive than vinyl with a lot more features and benefits, not quite as expensive as a wood clad window. The other thing I like about this line in particular is the color on the frame is actually through it. It's not just a topical paint. And every single window they make is PG35 rated or better which is basically a rating of how well it's gonna resist wind and water from coming through the frame. It's an impressive little product. All right, Bill, it looks like we got a rough opening. It's ready to go. That's right. Anything else we need here? Uh, well, we need to prep the window with our caulking on three sides. Yep. And I, I prefer to put the caulking on the uh, sheathing itself rather than the window. That way you don't have to put your fingers in it. We could sit the window on the sill and push it into place. Um, it kind of limits the amount of uh, mess that we make on top of the windows. Yeah, so in this case, we're going to be using uh, Dynaflex Ultra. This is really just a belt and suspenders is what we're doing. So um, we're going to run that in a U-shape from here all the way on up. You want an unbroken, nice bead. And this is what the flange is going to sit on. And again, this is just belt and suspenders. We're just making sure that if something were to fail on the flashing tape. All right guys, just, just a quick side note here. We took the caulking off because we are gonna be pulling this window for another demonstration and I didn't want it bonded forever. But you're gonna have a U-shaped bead and we're not gonna caulk at the sill when we set that window. All right, so we've imaginary caulked the three sides. We're gonna place the window in and push it into the spot. Now what I'm gonna do, Matt, is I'm gonna run inside and with the nail bar, I'll uh, level it out okay. and shim it as necessary. And do you want me to put one nail in a corner? Well, as soon as point? I get you, as soon as I tell you where to go, you know, each sill is different and each frame is different. So what I want to do is, is uh, get it up on its, on its shims if it's needed. And then we also kind of want to center it inside the framing. You know, every house has got every detail. So, you know, we're either going to have a sheetrock return or a wooden jam, or who knows what. So, so what Will's gonna do is he's gonna put two shims underneath there to leave a little bit of a gap between that waterproofing we just did and the window itself that's gonna go on the inside. Right. Here you go, Bill. Okay, you wanna hold the top of that? Yep, I'll hold that. Go. And we've also got a two foot level in the house for us to check plumb level and square. That seam right there at the top, we actually pulled that zip tape up so we could shingle it correctly. So make sure your sill is clean. Make sure the bottom of your See, we're not totally level, level is we? clear. And looks like I need to come up on Matt's right hand side. Yep. So and Bill's I'm going to pull that up a little there. bit. I'm going to break the tip of my shim off to get the height that shims. I want. Yeah, that looks good, Bill. Yeah, let me just pull it out a hair more. And let's pull the window down. So what I've noticed is I have even space side to side, even space top to bottom. That'll enable me to get a good sheet rock surround or a wood trim surround. So Matt, I think if you grab those, I've got the top of the window, the roofing nails are there. I got the roofing nails. Yeah, I like to use galvanized roofing nails because it's got a good flat head. And in this scenario, since this is a casement, here's my opening. Matt, go to your left-hand side and put me one in the corner there. Okay. We're using a non-waffle face hammer too on here. If I accidentally hit that frame. So I'll just like sure a that... door, we want to go ahead and secure. Go ahead and give me one in the middle on that same side, please. Okay. Secure our hinge side. You want me to go to the top one or you want me to go down a little uh, bit? Just to the top, it'd be great. 
now we can go to the other side okay. and do the same thing. Definitely on your uh, one over ones, you want to make sure that the, the middle of your jam legs are not pooched in or pooched at, out because that will really affect the function of a window. Like it'll get tight when you try to slide it up or it'll maybe fall out of its track. So you always want to make sure that those are nice and lined up. This is a casement. It's locked into position. So it's locked into its frame. And so after we get it nailed up, it should operate just fine. I love casement windows. Big and fan of casements. After we set every window before we go anywhere else. Let me check its operation. Right? We check it for operation. Yep, make sure everything's working well. You know, if you're doing a line of windows, what you're gonna be doing is making sure they all line up, especially in a single room. Single window install, fairly straightforward. When you start talking about a line of windows, you have to make sure all of those line up. Bill, let me ask you a question. Uh, do we want a nail in every single uh, hole or do we want to skip one? I think it just depends on how the flange lays down. Yeah. You know, we've got it sealed from the backside. Yep, we've and got the caulking gonna, back there too. Yeah, we've got the caulking back there and then we've got the nails. We've left the bottom open to allow any water that may get back there to escape and then we're going to seal over the top of the flange. Mm -hmm. So if our flange is laying down nicely, there may be some situations where you could skip. Um, you know, sometimes putting all the nails in will make the flange pucker a little bit. Yeah. So you just have to read the situation and whatever you feel is best is what you should do. Let's talk about the uh, bottom now though, Bill. Do you have those uh, composite shims for us? Right, let me grab those. I want to mention on the bottom that, remember, we didn't put any caulking on the bottom here. And you could nail this tight. In fact, a lot of manufacturers call for that in their install instructions. Um, but what I prefer to do, and uh, again, I'm not, a, uh, uh, I'm not telling you that this is true for every window manufacturer. You're going to have to uh, look this up on your own. But what I think is right is for us to get a little bit of a shim in here by these um, bottom ones. So when we nail these bottom ones down, we're gonna have a little bit of a gap between that flange and our waterproofing. So if any water got in there, it would have a place to run out. So when we nail this up tight here, we're gonna, we're gonna not quite nail it so that this isn't snug. We're gonna leave just a little bit of room for that on the bottom. Now, we're not gonna finish all the nail holes on this window before we move on to flashing because this window is gonna get removed uh, for another demo we're doing. But in general, as Bill said, we want to either fill every hole or at least every other hole all the way around the window. Except for the bottom. Except for the bottom. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got our window nailed up, installed, and now we're going to go ahead and finish this thing up. We're going to take our zip window flash and lay it over the top of the window flange and apply it to the face of the zip wall. You want to notice that Bill started that tape about the same distance up as the um, underlying tape. He doesn't want to go too high because we're going to end up uh, shingling correctly with the tape. So we'll run it past the bottom flange, a couple of inches, and make sure and lay that down nicely and roll it out. Let me roll that out before I get the next piece on there making sure to adhere to the flange. And I know it seems like a lot, but you know, honestly, with all of the rotten wood that I've replaced in my life, this is where you get the rot. Yep. So, you know, you lose energy coming out of your windows, you allow water in, and so why not just take a little bit of time? Do it right. And do it right. And Bill, I do want to mention it. something I like about this Geldwin window. Because this is a composite window, the flange on this is integral to the frame, meaning it's the same material as the frame, similar to a vinyl window, really. And so, as a result, we don't need to wrap our tape onto the body or frame of the window. Now, there are some manufacturers that have a uh, stab in. Uh, flange, am I using the correct term? Stab in sure. or, or a uh, It's an extruded frame that's got a separated uh, right. flange. That and oftentimes you see that on aluminum clad windows where you have an aluminum clad window, but the nailing flange is PVC or something. 
And so in that case, we actually wanna wrap our tape up onto the side here. If you come around the side, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, so uh, Bill's got his tape flush right here. If you can see, the tape's gonna go right here. But if this was an aluminum window with a separate uh, nailing flange, we'd actually wanna wrap that tape onto this frame as well. So we got a little extra belt and suspenders. All right, Bill, let's come over and do the side now. All right, so now we're gonna shingle. Most important thing here, we always wanna make sure that we shingle all of our tape and you just imagine yourself being a drop of water and what a drop of water would do. And remember that water can and does run uphill as well. So what you'll notice here in the shot is we've got our, our tape at our joint kind of folded up a little bit. And that is so we can get the ultimate belted suspender action. Roll this over the top. I also want to point out this tape you can see is higher than the tape layer that was below it. If it wasn't hired, we want to put another piece of tape on there. If for some reason you messed up and that, that tape that was on the flange went too high, either cut it back or make the next layer go a little higher. That's real important. Okay, window's looking great. Um, last step is to put a head flashing on. Now, honestly, this is a mock-up and look at, look at how close this window is to a two foot overhang. <laughs> if this was really the case, I wouldn't be super worried about needing a head flash. This window is not gonna see any water at the head. But if this was a bottom window on a two-story house, yes, we definitely want a head flash or even worse, a house with no overhangs. So use your judgment on when you need and when you don't need, but if, you, if you're not certain, add one. I got this bent at a, uh, a local sheet metal company here in Austin called Capital Company, but usually your roofer is gonna have at least a 10 or maybe even a 20 foot break. And I got this bent in a similar black metal to uh, match my frame. An old roofer taught me when you're using a roofing nail, hold it with the mushy side of your fingers up because if you hit your fingers, you hit the soft side and not the nail. Uh, that's smart. Anyway, I think that's enough. Yep, I think that's good. And then we got to put a piece of tape on that One and we are piece done. Of tape. And this window install is complete. Can get milk, Bill. Thank you. Big thanks to our friends at Huber for sponsoring today's video. We've, we've uh, really liked the zip system and we're going to be using it on this real remodel. And also big thanks to Geldwind. This is their brand new window. As I mentioned earlier, it's getting unveiled at the International Builder Show in Las Vegas in January. It's gonna be available nationwide early in 2020. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. And oh, by the way, check out our new website, buildshownetwork.com, where we're publishing one new video every single day of the week. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.